What's up everybody, Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX coming at you with another video. Today I'm out at the track doing a little speed endurance work. Had a good workout, uh, I set some training PRs. Let's see, I set a PR from 60 to 90 meters, that was 293. I set a PR to 90, which was 987. I ran 1091, which is not a training PR, but it's always nice to break 11 in practice. And then to 120, I ran 1298, so I broke 13. So, you know, it's nice to see that. The last time I did 120s, I ran 13.11. The time before that, I ran 13.49. So I am seeing some nice, you know, improvement. Now, this kind of brought up the concept in my head of, you know, what is super compensation? What is the whole stimulus fatigue recovery adaptation idea? Because many of you probably know about all this stuff, but if some of you don't, so I figured it would be worth bringing it up. Now, in, in its simplest form, you know, any training se session is just a, it's some type of stress. We're, we're using training as a way to create a certain type or a certain group of stressors that the body will then respond to. And the type of stress you apply dictates how the body's going to respond. So if you go lift a really heavy weight, you break down muscle tissue, your nervous system gets challenged, well, your body's going to... if if the stress is big enough for it to want to respond, bigger than what you've you know, maybe experienced in the past or close to it, then your body's gonna dedicate resources you know, through protein synthesis by maybe myelinating neural pathways or improving rate coding or motor unit recruitment, that type of stuff. If you go on a long run, what's gonna happen? Well, you're challenging your body for oxygen delivery, so it's gonna do things like maybe increase how many red blood cells or your hemoglobin or you know, increase your VO2 max, you know, whatever the, the stressors are that you apply in your training session, that's what your body's gonna respond to. But in and of itself, you know, a training session is just one single dose of stress. Obviously, we wanna have the best training session possible every day that we come to the track, but, or go to the gym, but in and of itself, that one workout is not gonna make the difference because if you stress your body once and then you do nothing for two weeks, well, you're just going to go back to baseline. So the whole concept of super compensation and, you know, stimulus, fatigue, recovery, adaptation is that, you know, most of the time we're operating here at a baseline. Then we apply stimulus via training. That stimulus is stress and that stress is going to cause fatigue. So if you imagine you had your, you know, how ready you are, your readiness or your physical state, you apply a training stressor or the stimulus and fatigue sets in. Then your body's gonna go, whoa, all right, that was gnarly. I need to do something about that. So it starts to recover. And then as you recover, you start to adapt to that training in response to the fatigue that you've experienced. And if the training stress was the right dose, it wasn't too much, but it also was enough to stress you, then by the time that you fully recover, you'll adapt to that and your readiness will be higher than it was at baseline before. So that's the whole concept of super compensation is we start here, we get fatigued, and then our body says, okay, I need to respond to this. It starts dedicating resources to get better at handling that stress. And then you end up better able to handle that stress the next time you experience it. And what, how does that manifest? Well, that manifests in me going from 1349 in a 120 to 1311 to 1298 or running like 113 to 11 1 to 10 9 you know that sort of thing but there are issues that arise when either a you know the training stress is chronically too high b the training stressors are placed too densely in the program meaning you know you're hit you're stressing your body too often or you're not stressing your body often enough or the stressors aren't enough. So what happens in those situations? Well, if you're chronically stressed, then visualize that curve. You know, you're here at baseline, you apply a stimulus, you now get fatigued. As you come back up from that, if the training stress was too much, instead of dipping to here, you're gonna dip way down here. And then as you recover, your new baseline might actually be below where it was before unless you give yourself a really long time to recover. Now what happens if the training is properly dosed but it's too frequent? Well, we're here, baseline, stimulus is applied, we get fatigued, 
we start to recover, but as we're recovering, we stress the body again, so now we dip back down below the level of fatigue that we were at before. So it's kind of similar to if you had too stressful of a session, the same thing can happen when the stressors are placed too densely within a period of time. You now can't get back up to baseline because you keep hammering your body and it doesn't have time to recover. But what happens if you know you don't apply enough of a stressor? Well, you're at baseline, you apply a little bit of a stress, but it doesn't sense your body doesn't, you know, feel like it needs to do anything about it, so you just come back up to baseline. It doesn't give you that super compensation of increasing your readiness or increasing your ability to perform above what you were at before because the stress wasn't enough for it to think it needs to do anything about it. If you ran away from the tiger that was chasing you and you've always run away from the tiger, why would your body want to, you know, spend precious resources on getting faster? But if the tiger's getting close and you had to run even further because it kept chasing you, you know, maybe that's when it stimulates you to, to need to get better, that type of thing. And then what happens if you dose the stress properly but it's spaced too far apart? Well then, all right, we're here at baseline, stimulus is applied, fatigue, now we recover, now we adapt to the training, now we're above baseline, we're doing better than we were before, but we don't apply a new stress, so eventually, boom, we come back to baseline. So moral of the story is that you know training is sort of walking a fine line of how much stress you apply when you apply that stress what type of stress do you apply to the body you know if you're a hundred meter sprinter and you know most of the race is dependent on ATP and creatine phosphate systems and a little bit of you know anaerobic glycolysis but you're out there doing mile runs every day well you're probably not applying the right stress and so your body's going to adapt specifically to the stress you apply. You're going to have a great aerobic system, but you're going to suck coming out of the blocks. Or flip side, you run the 800, but all you're doing is, you know, just lifting. Obviously you want to lift if you're a distance runner, but if all you do is lift and run 60s, well then you're not going to run a very good 800. So you have to walk a fine line of not only, you know, when you apply the stress, how much stress you apply. Um, spacing that out properly so that you are ready for the next session but you're building upon that over time you're ramping up the training load over time um, and also applying stressors that are specific to what you need both for your event and specifically for your strengths and weaknesses you know there may be two people who run in the same event one person is great at the first half of the race the other one's good at the second half of the race they might have to work on different things um, and, you know, you don't want to overthink this, but I think a, a, a better way to approach it than, like, stressing yourself out mentally about, like, oh, am I doing it right, is just pay attention to how you feel after a session and pay attention to how long it takes before you feel like you've had another good session. So if I do this workout that I did today, which was uh, 4 by 40 yards on the turf in soccer cleats, and then I did 3 by 120 on the track, if I went and tried to train tomorrow intensely with sprints, I would feel like garbage. It would not go very well and, you know, maybe I'd run okay, but that following day I would be totally beat. Tomorrow I might go lift because that's a slightly different stressor. Um, I can handle that a little bit better after I've run than back-to-back -back running days. You know, so you think about those things, like how does, how does each of these different types of workouts affect me? And you can take notes over time, just keep track of how you actually feel, be intuitive about it and take notes, keep, keep a training journal or something like that. And you can also keep a training journal of how much you're doing. So I have a spreadsheet that I enter my times into, and then I also put how much volume I did, how much sprinting volume, how much tempo volume, and recently I've started to quantify like how far I'm going in my warm-ups or how many warm-up sprints I did, that sort of thing. And then I can look over time and see, okay, you know, every week that I went over 2,000 meters of sprinting or something like that, I noticed that the next week I was flat, you know, I felt terrible. Well, that means I was a pretty intense stressor. It doesn't mean I can't do that, but I need to know that because maybe that next week needs to be a down week so that my body can then recover from the fatigue and then end up better in that third week, you know? So pay attention to what you're doing. Don't just be completely mindless about how your training is set up. It doesn't mean that you have to know, you know, you have to plot out six months of training and it has to be perfect right when you write it down. But you want to keep track of how you respond to training, how you feel, and then also keep track of, okay, you know, I felt really good today, 
and then look back, well, what did I do leading up to that that led me to feel real good? And if you're feeling really good for a really long time, then you have to start asking yourself, all right, well, I'm feeling good, that's great for competition, but if I'm still trying to continue to improve, you know, if I'm always in a good state to train and I'm never fatigued, am I stressing my body enough? So it can be tough to sort of decipher the right training load for you. But if you're seeing PRs in your training, that's a good sign. Um, I would say that when you're not competing, you know, if it's not the season yet and you're not competing, then you might want to, you know, when you do get a PR, well, you want to recover from that session for sure. You want to allow your body to recover from that session. But maybe that's a sign that the next time you do that session, you add one more sprint or you lengthen it out a little bit. So that way you're increasing the stress just a slight amount and that will allow you to continue to move in the right direction. Whereas if you're going through a couple weeks of training and you set a PR one week, but then the next week you run slower and then the following week you run slower, you gotta look at, am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? And you can determine that based on how you feel. If your feet hurt, your shins hurt, your hamstrings hurt, you're tired every day and you're running slower, that's a sign you're, not, or you're doing too much and you're not recovering enough. If you start to see that you're running slower, but you feel great every day, that's probably a sign you're not stressing your body enough and you need to add an increased amount of stress. So pay attention to both the results and the subjective aspects of how you feel mentally, how motivated you are physically, how do your tendons, your, hand, your muscles, your joints, how do those feel? And that feedback that you get paired with looking at how much volume did I do? How intense was that volume? How frequently was I training? How dense was my training? When you look at all that stuff all in one, you know, kind of a, with a holistic view, then you can start to see, am, does my training make sense? Am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? And that can help guide you to find what the right program is for you. Because the amount of volume you do or the type of workouts that you do to improve are gonna be different than what I need to improve. I did three by 120 and four by 40 yards. Okay, that's 360, 460, 520 meters. Someone else might do 520 meters and be dead for a week after that. Most people probably wouldn't, but someone might. Someone might do that and it's nothing to them. You know, they can run 300s at that pace and they're fine. So you have to find the, the workouts and the setup that fits for you. But the only way you can do that is by keeping track of what you're doing, keeping track of how you're feeling, and keeping track of the results. It can be just hand times, it can be videotaping yourself, it could be tracking something else like maybe, you know, jumps or I don't know. There, you just gotta find things that work for you, that make sense for your situation. So that way you can track what you're doing over time and be able to gauge whether or not the training load is enough to cause to be enough of a stimulus to cause some fatigue that you can recover and then adapt to and not have it be too much to where it's something that just kills you and you know then you get hurt or something like that so that's all i got for you guys today i appreciate you watching the video catch you next time this is cody bidlow with sprintingworkouts.com and athletex signing off